Uh, yes, I remember how it was set up now. Uh, we lived in this house near the Hampshire Heath then. My first wife and me, and I had two young children, they were still school age. And I was told by my agent that there was a certain American producer wanted to meet me about a show. And uh, she arranged that we should all meet together and she would come with me at the White House Hotel in the bottom of Albany Street. And I was quite excited by this. In fact, when anyone eventually appeared with a book, I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> I thought I'd rather get another American contract. And anyway, I went to the White House and met uh, one of the um, directors of my agent's office who might look after me. That's what I did. I was there. She steered me towards the bar. And uh, I saw over the other side the bar area, uh, two of the girls who were hostesses from the of the century. And I said, oh look, that's so and so. Oh, I haven't seen her. I must go and greet them. And I started towards them, uh, you know, to say, I knew them all well. And she suddenly grabbed me by the arm. And she was a very gentle, I mean, this is very uncharacteristic. <laughs> and she propelled me towards the bar. And before I could order, it all became clear. Because up behind the bar, where he'd been spotting, of Damon Andrews, who was saying, Oh, it's not going to be a drink. Because Nicholas Martin says, This is your life. And you just fall from it, and you, everything that you said falls into place. And I suddenly realized I wasn't going to meet this very important film impresario from America. And then they took me to a dressing room, and they gave me hospitality. I think they brought me some champagne, I don't know. It was all, you know, pretty really better looked after. It was just absorbing it all, really. Just drifting. Disappointed at what I was looking forward to, potentially. And uh, pondering on all the strange things that were being said to me by the people who were going to be in the program a little later. I mean, I obviously knew my family were going to be there. And my elderly parents, who um, my father was very weak then, and I, and I thought, oh, this is delightful. They'd made the effort, and I think they were quite shocked about seeing their son in this position. But uh, it, it was very, very popular. I do think it was at the top of the ratings most weeks, and uh, so it was a very prestigious program in which to appear. But, you don't think like that. I just decided to go with it all and enjoy it. And suddenly it came to me like a party. with all these people giving up their time to come up and say nice things about you. So it was wonderful. I just basked in the joy and the pleasure of the, uh, of the whole business. Thinking, who they got next? Who was it? And, uh, and Clement Freud came on and said a few very kind things. And Because uh, I was working for him a lot at his club, the Royal Court Theatre Club, and, uh, and I remember all the other people coming on. Uh, these two um, characters from the end of my days in engineering in the Clyde Bank. And one of the foremen, Jim Blair, was there. And um, he was a bit of a tough character. And I was a bit uh, frightened of him as a young, you know, young apprentice. But when he came on, he was charming. So, <laughs> And especially the other chap who came was in the drawing office, John Shaw, who was with the assistant boss in the office. And, and John, I remember, they both said nice things about me. And they told sort of comical stories about me entertaining them all up there. But I remember afterwards when we had the reception, they got, they got almost plastered. They, you know, this was, to them, something that probably never happened in their lives. Here they were, I was, showbiz environment, mixing with people they only seen on the screen, and being lavished with as much alcohol as they wanted. And they were absolutely knocked out with it all. And they were, it was so lovely, because they really enjoyed the, the, the trip and the excursion. It was, to them, a, a memorable occasion. One story I must tell you is the finale. And this is how they used to think. I mean, they never discuss it, but you could see they always try to have at the end a surprise. And 
my wife, obviously, if I may, I never asked her this, but I assume what she said, what she said, she, he was very friendly with somebody called Jean Finder, who was the, the fiancé of his great friend, Alec. She was now married with Mrs. Trotter, and she lived in Canada. And, and I think she made out that she was a much closer friend to my people. But she was trying to help them to give them somebody from abroad, you see. And the poor girl had to come on last. And I hadn't seen her for years. And uh, she said, do you remember this voice? Well, I really vaguely remembered it. And on walked he. And she was so overwhelmed by the situation. She was such a bag of nerves. She said something to the effect, when I saw you years ago, in your boiler suit, working as an apprentice in here in Clyde Bank, and we used to walk out to I did think, when I acted with you, that I might one day, you wanted to say, see your name in, in uh, floodlights. And she simply said, what to see your name in headlamps? And she was nervous, it wasn't very coherent, and the payoff to her story was in headlamps, and it was cut out actually. So that big climax at which they'd spent a fortune um, fell flat, and it had to come. Summing up the experience, I would say that it, it was a very exciting day. It's memorable. I mean, there you are, the object of attention, of all kinds of friends and family have decided to give up the time and come out and say nice, flattering things about you. I mean, just, just wallowing in their, their praise and, and, and love. It's, 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 it's fantastic. I didn't want the day to finish the party. I wanted it to go on forever. When you consider all the people they could have been, I was very flattered, yes. We asked, I mean, there were all the people around. Um, but I suppose I was high profile at the time through this quiz show I did say about this intro. Of course, I'd had a good track record with the Arthur Haynes show and the Eric Barker show before that, and a lot on radio, and just a minute was still very strong on radio. So there was an awful lot to recommend it. And, um, but I was still flattered and certainly enjoyed it. Disappointed at the time that I wasn't going to meet this great American impresario, but I enjoyed the whole thing as a wonderful party with all my friends and family together, and I didn't have to pay for it.